Hi everyone, this is Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide, the website and most often now the video uh, YouTube channel. I hope you're well. Um, I'm back for a new rundown uh, as promised. Um, and this time, as I don't have a lot of bottles, it won't be as long as usual. Uh, and also I'm going to divide the tasting because I think uh, several bottles here deserve a special treatment and uh, a separate video. So uh, I'm going to do a, a short presentation of what I have and then I will speak to you a bit more about uh, the distillery. Uh, and of course, as usual, you will find information in the description below the video, right? So first of all, uh, and yeah, before I forgot, the whole range is currently being rebranded. So I will show you the picture after that short presentation, but I don't forget this point. Um, but I did this because I think at least those three bottles here you can find still can find them uh, in some dusty shelves or secondary market and sometimes online shops with really reasonable price especially for the 10. so starting by this one we're going to speak about this uh, beautiful uh, great value whiskey which is the uh, fitted version of the 10 years old there are two or three even i think now different versions of the 10 years old um if i'm not mistaken yeah since 2017 there's even a triple distilled 10 years old but this is the double distilled uh we're talking about space side single malt here um from scotland so we have the curiositas that has been launched in 2004 uh, this one is a combination of virgin oak, toasted virgin oak casks, bourbon casks, I don't know, the fields, and rum casks. This is bottled at 46%, doesn't state if it is uh, chill filtered or colored. Probably is, but not too much. Uh, my bottle is from 2014. So I will uh, detail this uh, and repeat this in the uh, separate videos, tasting videos, uh, proper whiskey reviews, if you like. Biggest recommendation on the table, value-wise and affordability, uh, availability-wise, this absolutely beautiful uh, 10 years old pitted called Curiositas from the previous uh, launch during the previous ownership uh, but we'll talk about it uh, again the ownership and all that jazz so this is the first one i wanted to uh, present you this is a beautiful continental peat uh, not isla peat so it's a bit drier single malt really uh, a beautiful one and i think i'm not the only one to praise it second one i'm going to present you that's probably a bit more difficult to get but really really uh i i advise it to you a lot uh this is the second edition i have from uh 2015 i think if i'm not mistaken uh yeah it's a bottle from 2015 second release of the solstice which is a heavily pitted port finish um, whiskey with uh, first and second field bourbon for the first uh, i think 15 years if i'm not mistaken uh, i'll double check that for the video so this is as you can see insane color and i don't think it's too much at least artificial um, yeah so heavily pitted uh, malt and uh, this comes while well, the previous one I forgot to say uh, was at 46% this comes at 50% ABV which is a beautiful uh, compromise between cast strength and low strength uh, this is absolutely the, the best uh, ABV for this expression uh, really recommend it 
uh, talking about price the previous one uh, retails around 35 to 45 the 10 years old uh, I had it oh man I don't remember yeah 48 uh, euros in 2014 according to the markets of course Belgium uh, again uh, Germany um, Luxembourg I don't know um, Netherlands get a much better price for uh, these whiskies and I had three of those from Bel two of those from Belgium by the way uh, thanks to a good friend uh, at less much less expensive 75 uh, 73 73 euros for this one uh 75 sorry but which is ridiculous because it was around 85 here or more um so not sure about the price on secondary market uh, or like i said dusty shelves are really worth uh chasing uh it, it's gorgeous it's, it's very rich very thick very intense whiskey but still very balanced and the port is a uh, really uh, an, uh, well nice aged port and really uh, complements the the distillery character and the peat is uh, more than a signature here it's really uh, head to head with the with the port influence so that's it for the second one so and then this a bit controversial uh, i see a bit of mixed opinions about this one uh, there's also several batches not all of the same quality this one i have to say i struggled a bit to find back the pleasure i had with a sample with another bottle i mean we had during the master class and it's because of this master class that i bought the two previous ones because they were really gorgeous and uh, very there's there's a lot of uh, and what, what I like in this uh, well, let's say distillery at this time because it, things have changed a lot now is the cons consistency uh, at least for the 10 years old uh, they were also a, a nice uh, 12 years old sherry wood alas now it's discontinued um, and the two major others uh, regarding peat i really advise you if you still can find them uh the 21 years old and the 30 years old authenticus which are the uh, really uh, uh, the uh, the stars of the peated range for me uh, of course with the more affordable curiositas in in uh, this distillery i don't know if the 21 years old uh, and the, there's a 25 as well and the 30 years old authenticus that means pitted uh, and i think pitted 35 to 38 ppm for those uh, will still be maintained during the new um, for the new range that has been just uh, unveiled this month uh, well i mean a few weeks ago so it's september um, and um, we'll see for this one i found different informations in the master class they told us uh, this one had uh, some madeira cask but online and in other uh, sources i don't find the madeira mention which is weird but i found uh, 50 percent first fill bourbon uh, aged uh, for more than 23 years uh, according to some sources uh, for instance 1001 whiskies you should try before you die uh, from charles mclean uh, supervising a, a panel of, of uh, reviewers in this book he states it's over 30 23 years old for this special 20 years old okay <coughs> excuse me then <coughs> sorry in addition to the first fill bourbon there is around 15 to 20 sherry peaks ah, excuse me okay so apologies for the short interruption um yeah so we're saying uh, basically this 20 years old uh which is gonna be probably discontinued is made of uh, first fill bourbon barrels uh the majority the, the half of it and then um around 20 percent of sherry uh, pedro Rimines 
and then 35% uh, of Hawkshead third field and fourth field. But some other sources state there are also some Madeira cask. So a slight sourness in this, so might explain all the different sherry types because I I sense the refill Hawkshead had some staves that were the staves that were uh, from sherry. I might be wrong. It's just a guess. So yeah. I think this one is sometimes a bit difficult. I had other bottles uh, tried that were better. Um, so try before you buy or don't uh, spend 100 euros for this. I'm not sure it's more interesting. If I were you uh, and if I wanted to have a very special uh, Ben Riach from the uh, previous packaging, I will buy this. The 10 years old, of course, Curiositas, but I will buy this. This is awesome. Uh, also, um, the 21 years old, that's still, um, I hope, in, in the uh, new range. Uh, everything is, hasn't been revealed, uh, four references only. I hope it will be maintained. Uh, I don't know. But the 21 unpitted, uh, to my surprise, was very good as well. I tried it last year. Last but not least of the um, session today is this Ben Riach, uh, 1981, bottled in 2004 by uh, Gordon McPhail, independent bottler, 43% ABV, chill filtered and probably a bit colored, but not much. Cask type is refill Sherry Hogshead. Um, and this one we're gonna have a small try of it not a super proper long review because you probably might not find it and I believe there are better ones in the in the uh, bottling territory today but it's it's an old bottle so I uh, gotta show some respect and it, it it is interesting as well okay so we're gonna try this <coughs> right at the end um, and in the meantime, I'm going to speak a bit about the distillery, trying not to be too long. Um, so, before I speak about the distillery details, this is how looks it looks, the new packaging. So, you see it is uh, quite different from this, for instance. How can I show you? It's a bit different the characters uh, of the font are more standardized the 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 distillery shape uh, the silhouette has disappeared which i regret uh, i don't understand the, the concept of uh, of making things disappear of, of what is uh, what is some marks that immediately uh, also with the cutting of the R, which is bigger than the the other letters here, you, you know what I you understand what I mean. The specific uh, font and uh, shape used to 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 name the steering on the on the labels, all this disappears for something standardized. Uh, it's not bad. I, I find it okay, but like old Pultney, like. Uh, Bob Blair, everything that was uh, resuming uh, uh, as a sign of the distillery, every visual element has been dropped, and I don't like that. I think it's part of the pleasure you have when you uh, choose a whiskey, then you buy a whiskey, then of course not necessarily drink because the, 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 it's the juice you're drinking, not you're not licking the label. Label, um, oh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm not super happy with this also the fact that we're gonna be uh, using uh, I think where it is um, they're gonna have the 10 years old but the 10 years old it's um, they're gonna change it they were called the smoky 10 oh wait a minute <coughs> sorry yeah, so Rachel Barry, um, 
is now taking care of the new range. Since 2017, excuse me again. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Everything's okay, and all of a sudden uh, the video and and there you go. Yeah, so it's gonna be um, a new recipe for the 10 years old, and um, they're gonna they're gonna use several uh, kind of cask. Uh, it's true the current one has virgin oak, bourbon, and rum cask, but I think they're gonna add other other things to it. And for the sherry 12 years old, there's a new recipe including port uh, and bourbon casks. Uh, they will have also, um, which is really weird, the 10 and the 12. Um, Rachel explains in an interview that's gonna include some innovative combination quote of rum virgin oak and marcella casks mingle with more traditional bourbon and cherry so yeah uh, 20, um, 21 25 and 30 years old uh, that will come into the u.s in 2021 by the way um, probably before in europe so yeah there you have it i don't know you're gonna like it or not uh, so original 12 smoky 10 um, smoky 12 original and uh, probably an, an also uh, a no which statement about the distillery now um it has been founded uh, by john duff and other uh, associates in 1897 um, and at this time um the distillery was quickly um, associated with Longmorn because it was the owner of the, they were owning the two and it's close to the Elgin town in Speyside and to Glen Elgin and Linkwood distilleries so lots of different owners uh, allied breweries then Pernod Ricard in 2001 which Alice will put it uh, in mothball uh, right away and then Billy Walker and two uh, foreign investors, uh, by foreign I mean non-Scottish, um, bought it in 2004 along with um, Glen Ronach and Glen Grosso distilleries. Finally in 2016, because this ownership things may not be your uh, first interest, uh, Brown Foreman uh, bought the Ben Riach and Glen Ronach and the other distillery. So the distillery, uh, it's an old, old-fashioned one. There were its own malting floors, uh, but they stopped it in 2000, except nowadays for around 10% of the need in malted barley. They had uh, a cast iron mash tun that it's uh, covered with shelled with um, stainless steel, five ton, 5.8 tons. They have eight washbacks uh, made of stainless steel and uh, four steels. Uh, the peated spirit is at around 35 to 38 um, ppm. Malted, I mean, malted with, with peat at 35 to 38 ppm. And um, the production, which is uh, maximum 2 million uh, 8 liters per annum of pure alcohol. But most often, like in 2019, uh, 1 million 8. Uh, a very small percentage of the production, which was for last year 15,000 liters, is devoted to a triple distilled uh, 10 years old and some experiments. Um, but 50% of the production are st still um, is for the, uh, the uh, blended whiskies from Pan or Ricard, for instance, Shivas Regal. It goes into Shivas. Uh, first pitted PM, though we know uh, the historians of whiskey I have some books behind me. There's not precise dates, but we know that um, in the 19th century, uh, I mean before uh, nowadays and before the 1960s, where there's a lot of distilleries that did change and switch to uh, to uh, indirect firing, uh, uh, using gas, using different coils with uh, heated, uh, with heat. Uh, that was not uh, no more coming from coal or, or peat. 
but Benriach is known for having a list in the modern era uh, from 1972 uh, producing pitted whiskies. Um, the first one which has been commercialized as I understand but sources are uh, not agreeing on the, on the uh, exact date but I found 1983 as a most probable date and the Curiositas was launched in 2004. Um, then the, this distillery is also known uh, to have a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, finishes, a lot of launches at some periods of its time, and it's hard to to keep up with all this bottling. But in 2004, there was a 12 years old, 16 and 20 years old. Uh, later on, you have the famous 21 years old Authenticus, like I said, which is pitted. Um, 25 years old, 30, 40 years old. A beautiful, I have to uh, the chance to try it. 15 years old in sauté and cask. This solstice in 2010. There's two versions of it, two uh, editions, releases. Sorry. Uh, then some uh, finishes in a wine cask. Gaja Barolo, which is Italian, a red wine, Moscatel. Uh, also, uh, they, gonna s they started around the 2010 and more uh, with the famous uh, Latin like uh, names Aromaticus, Marandi, Sept Septendecim, some <laughs> unpronounceable. Uh, and also a pitted version that was not called uh, Ben Riach, but uh, Bernie Moss. You still can find it. Uh, so yeah, there's a triple distilled and sometimes called Horizons. Um, lots of bourbon casks, more than for Glendronach, same owner. Uh, and also lots of sherry cask, but more in the previous time than now. Um, they launched in 2016 a pitted quarter cask and a cast strength. And the triple is still 10 years old, is from um, 2017. Among other things, uh, I have to precise, there has been also, um, and I don't need this for that, but more my memory, um, the uh, most famous Ben Riach for me are the independent bottlings. Um, and also the uh, exclusive bottlings from some festivals. Uh, one of the most famous is the 1976 uh, Benria for, for the Whiskey Fair. I think it was 2014, I'm not sure. Oh, and, and there you go. I have a... I forgot. Uh, again, I should have double-checked that. Apologies. But um, this is for Whiskey Fair Lingberg. So you will easily find uh, this, I think, this reference in Whiskey Base. This is 1976. Uh, I had the chance to try it two times. And, uh, and honestly, you when you try it, if you don't know it's a whiskey, you might think it's a, it's a, a powerhouse uh, patient fruit juice, tropical juice, fruit juice, but with alcohol. It's so fruity, it's it's absolutely crazy. And since then, I tried several other 70s vintages, but on the recent period, I couldn't uh, try all the, the offer. And for instance, a few years ago, uh, they had 16 novelties, 16 releases in, in, in the year. And how can you try all these? How can you make sure? some are interesting uh, it's almost impossible or, or you spend all your time with that but anyway things have changed now they're generalizing uh, generalizing the use of virgin oak which I'm a bit picky about uh, it has succeeded in this uh, however so uh, it depends how it is work once again if it's just a, a, a tiny amount and correctly toasted can work well sorry okay so that's it for the uh, for the Benriach distillery uh, story and offer 
uh, in the weight of more precisions, more details about uh, are there going to be more than four references, like I told you before? Uh, are there going to be limited release? Probably. Um, we haven't tried this yet. I think we'll probably touch the shelves uh, around the end of the year, maybe in Europe or very soon, I, I guess. All things have been a bit delayed because of the COVID and uh, cancelling of a lot of whiskey shows here in Europe and in uh, France in particular. But I think it's the same in the UK. Uh, so we couldn't try the novelties. Uh, some uh, the the some who organize festivals here have have organized small tastings with a few people only and four or five whiskies at a time. Of course, it's uh, it has a cost. Uh, I don't want to go to these at the moment. Uh, I am a person with risk, health-wise, like we say, uh, and I don't want to go to places where you cannot be sure there's enough social distancing and renewal of the air which is very important the filters from the air condition uh, when there is have to be changed on a regular basis etc I don't want to bother too much with the, this country consideration back to Benriach uh, I'm gonna taste now for you just for the sake of the uh, let's say the historical um, on a historical point of view so not going to be super detailed tasting and I want to keep up under the 30 minutes which seemed to be difficult I have still this sniper coin thank you crazy Mir, for picking it this for me uh, picking me to have it and uh, thank you Roy for sending it to me it's nice Sniper, it's not a military thing, it's when uh, we're doing Roy Aquaviti channel um, guessings on different things, uh, different games, uh, we can uh, win a, a sniper coin when we, uh, lo when we dropped a name very quickly and it, it's a good one. Okay, so I'm gonna try this. Uh, so, like I said, this is a refill sherry hogshead, so not a, a powerful influence, but often a refill sherry for me is the best vehicle for uh, letting the distillery character express itself. So, onto the nose. Yeah, this fruitiness immediately comes through, fruitiness um, and some kind of a bit of alcohol um, and also. Um, yeah, the herbal side on the background, some slight sourness, which is also typical from Ben Riach at some point. Uh, candied fruit. Some vanilla in the background and not much. Yeah, some acidity coming through. The bottle was more rounded in the beginning, more average as well. Uh, I don't open it often, I didn't guess it, uh, but I think it's still okay. I'm gonna soon uh, put it into a sample to make room also for other bottles, maybe later on. So nice nose, but not super uh, spectacular. Okay, on the palette, Slangera. Mm, nice. Typical Benria complexity. Floral notes, fruity nets, some tinned uh, fruit as well so not only fresh fruits uh, there's some tea leaves um, as we can see also in the in the curiosity in the 17 um, when i mean tea leaves i mean uh, a bit of 
green tea, a bit of uh, black tea, slight bit of Earl Grey tea as well. Let me take another sip. Yeah, so it's a lot of vegetable green elements. But you have this often in old whiskies, 23 years old, not super old. But and it and it's bear in mind it's 2004 bottling, so it's kind of old era, uh, still old era of uh, not golden age, but something like that of uh, malt whiskey and um, Gordon McPhail often touched a lot of beautiful casks. Um, it's not the most spectac spectacular Benria, but it's a nice one. I uh, don't remember how much uh, I, I, I gave it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I turn now to... Uh, I'm almost sure at some point I'm going to drop all the, the rankings, the, the ratings, to just keep the, the notes, tasting notes, because it's getting difficult and a bit controversial and complicated, really, to... Uh, that there's people buying directly from uh, Serge, uh, uh, from Serge Valentin, uh, from Whiskey Fun and others, just seeing it's over 90 out of 100. Some people that doesn't want to uh, to to work on their own taste and learn things, they will just buy what is uh, advised without even considering trying before buying, etc. I can understand that at some point especially for some references you like etc but to do that all the time uh, i don't know plus it's all only leads to more rarity for other people especially if you buy more than one just saying okay with a few drops slight sourness slight bitterness of the oak as well often in old bottlings but I love the the fact the leaves, the tea leaves, are almost some tobacco as well, blown tobacco. Works it with the with discreet fruit and floral profile to make a nice complex whiskey. So that's it. Hope you like it. Tanjava. See you next time. And for the next ones, I'm going to speak about the... Um, three other expressions uh, I presented you so uh, it will be shorter the presentation of the distillery will be shorter and I'll get right to the uh, to the tasting so I uh, hope you're you will stay in tune to see the other ones so see you soon cheers